Shalom and Shana Tova, everybody. <laughs> I'm very happy and honored to be here in beautiful Vancouver. And I would like to first thank you for reminding me that there's still winter in the world after the hot summer. Well, I'm your Israeli speaker, but you should know that I have a dual citizenship, an Israeli and a Canadian. I remember my citizenship ceremony at downtown Toronto. I was excited. The lady judge who conducted the ceremony said, there are people from 32 nationalities in the room. She said that she believes that what makes Canada strong and special is its diversity, that each can keep his own culture and tradition, yet all be Canadians. And I remember thinking to myself that it must seem so natural for you here in Canada, and that you might think that in Israel too, we embrace diversity. After all, we have Israeli Jews and Israeli Arabs, we've got Bedouins and Druze, ultra-Orthodox, Ethiopians, religious and secular. Yes, we are diverse, but we grow up separately. You know when I met my first Israeli Arab? It was when I started working at Appleseed's Academy. Only then I met, really met, my first Israeli Arab, my first Ethiopian, my first Bedouin. In Israel, the education systems are separated. Even towns are separated in Israel. We have an Israeli Jewish town and an Israeli Arab town. Yes, we do have mixed towns, but those are mostly with separated neighborhoods. Israel is called the startup nation, and rightfully so. Amazing technologies and innovation is being done in my country. Who doesn't waste his way to work today? Do you know that in a lab in Tel Aviv, organs are now 3D printed, real organs? Can you imagine what would have happened in Israel in the horrible previous summer that we have without the Iron Dome? I had a surreal experience last summer with my three kids on Jaffa Beach. It was a hot Shabbat morning, and we were in the water when my son Jonathan, who was then 19, said, Mom, I hear a siren. I rushed my three kids to the beach, and we hid under a small concrete roof. The surreal part was, once we saw the missile explode high above in the blue sky, we went back to the water as if it was a regular Shabbat morning. So yes, amazing technologies are happening in Israel. But look at this map from the Wall Street Journal. It's a map of the startups in Israel. 1,300 startups in Tel Aviv. Nothing in Kiryat Shmona in the north. Nothing in Elat in the south. What you see is not a startup nation. It is a startup metropolis. It is segregated in the middle of the country. It is mostly startups of secular Ashkenazi Jews who are served in our elite technological units. Almost no Israeli Arabs, no Ethiopians, no Bedouins, no Druze, no ultra-Orthodox, almost no women. You remember the lady judge from my citizenship ceremony, her strong belief in the power of diversity? Well, I believe Israel should be a startup nation for all. It means from Elat to Kriyat Shmona to all sectors. My mission is to turn the startup metropolis into a startup nation, that everybody can take part from all cultures, from all sectors. What is a startup nation for me? My first peek into the startup nation was when I was about 11 years old. My father worked at a secret work at Rafael, it's the national security company in Israel. And we were invited, the families of the employees, to the R&D center of the company in Tel Aviv. We entered what looked to me then like a huge room. All the space from floor to ceiling was a huge machine. And the guide said, this is a computer, and look what it, it can do. Everybody turned silent. Not easy for Israelis. 
And then we heard, da na 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 na, da na 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 na. The music was made by the machine. We all clapped. That was my first computer. All of you here hold in your hands or in your pockets, and I hope you put it aside for my 12 minutes, a computer much, much better than the one I thought I saw at my father's secret work. And today, Raphael develops nanosatellites, and Israel is ranked number one. Number one in the budget allocated for research and development, number one in the number of startups outside of the Silicon Valley. But Israel is also ranked high in another index, in the OECD Inequality Index. We are ranked number four. Haifa University and Appleseeds Academy developed the Digital Genie Index, which measures the gap between sectors in Israel and between towns in Israel. This is a call for action for our government to bridge the gap. You know that we are the startup nation, but only 10% of our population have access or participate in it. Guess how many Ethiopian kids did advanced math or English matriculation exam this year, 2015? Only 26 Ethiopian kids did advanced math matriculation exam. Only 59 Ethiopian kids did advanced English exam. Do you think they will be recruited by the new Apple R&D Center opened just recently in Herzliya? No, they wouldn't. The fiction novelist William Ford Gibson said, the future is here. It's just not very evenly distributed. I see on a daily basis with my own eyes the impact of this uneven distribution. It creates new hierarchies with little option for mobility in between them. You remember the organs being 3D printed? Some of us will be able to afford it. Some of us won't even hear about it. But there are initiatives in Israel that are changing this situation now. And I want to share with you three examples. My good friend Moishe Friedman, he was supposed to be a great rabbi. Well, he is a rabbi, and he is great, but he decided to start Kamatech. Kamatech trains young ultra-Orthodox men and women to become computer programmers and startupists. They already have dozens of graduates recruited by tech companies in Israel. This is a bus that Moishe organized, taking startups startupists of ultra-Orthodox community in Israel, and they visited the R&D centers in Israel. Trust me, all of them now are almost as celebs in Israel. The other initiative is a national one, led by the Prime Minister's office, and it's called Digitized Israel. It is leading the digital transformation of our country. A group of digital leaders was chosen from the public sector and from the civic sector, and I'm honored to be one of them. One of the projects that we chose is in Khura. Khura is a Bedouin town, about an hour drive from Be'er Sheva. The extraordinary mayor of Khura decided, he told me that all of my schools will be connected to the internet. He said, I received outrageous price offers from private companies and for the governments to connect the schools. So I decided I would do it on my own. He took his own municipality employees, they dug the canals for the fiber optics, and now all the schools are connected. We in Digitize Israel are learning his leadership model to replicate it to other towns in Israel. The third initiative is very close to my heart. It's the NETA program. It's a program that closes the gap for hundreds of youth in Israel between them and the startup nation. It is a technological youth movement where kids from the age of 13 till the age of 18, boys and girls, Jews, Arabs, and Druze, from 20 localities, including Kiryat Shmona and Elat, come to our centers twice a week after school. They get certified as PC technicians, network managers, computer programmers. 
They participate at hackathons hosted by companies like Microsoft and Google and Intel and Waze. But more than that, they become what you might call a mensch. They become active citizens proud of their communities. A month ago, I checked into the Judah Hotel in Jerusalem for a seminar of Digitized Israel. A young blue-eyed guy called Omar, according to his hotel name tag, asked me for my full name. I said, Daphne Lifshitz. He raised his blue eyes and said, I know this name. I thought to myself, he's way too young to make a move at me. <laughs> so I asked him kind of at the top of my head, maybe you're a Netta graduate? And he said, smiling, yes, I'm a graduate of Netta Jerusalem. And then I remembered where I met him. I met him four years before at, dem at a demonstration supporting the Ethiopian community in Jerusalem. I joined him and his Jewish friends. He was with his good friend Idan, an Israeli Jew, and I took a picture of him because he painted his face black in support and solidarity with the Ethiopian community. But then I was a bit concerned. I, I asked, all of our investment in Neta, and Omar is working at the front desk of the Judah Hotel, and then he said, mm -mm, I'm studying computer science in Jerusalem. I was so proud, and immediately I did what every proud Jewish mom would do. I took a selfie of us, <laughs> sent it to my team, posted it on Facebook. But my story doesn't end here. It's even like a Cinderella story. I decided I want to help Omar to get a better job. So I connected him with our employment coordinators. But Omar said, I want to work at Apple Seeds. I want to bring back to the program that changed my life. Omar today is a trainer of Neta Jerusalem. He is leading a new group of 20 boys and girls, Jews and Arabs, to become the digital leaders of Israel. So we have private initiatives like Moishi, and we have national ones like leading by the Prime Minister's office, and we have Neta. But you will be surprised to know that even you guys here in Vancouver play an important part in turning the startup metropolis into a startup nation. Six years ago, oh, sorry, this is Idan, his best friend. He is now a combat officer in the army at the Duvdevan unit. So six years ago, the Jewish Federation of Vancouver decided to invest in ETA and bring the startup nation's potential to Kriyat Shmona. We were able to leverage on your investment and secure additional one from Bezik, the Israeli telephone company. And we opened in Beit Vancouver a technological center where we train hundreds of unemployed women, youth at risk, youth, bright youth, and 10 groups of NETA. I want to add with a personal story that I have about the return on your investment. Her name is Rachel. She's there at the picture with me in the center in Kiryat Muna. Rachel joined NETA when she was 15. When she was 16, she was certified as PC technician and network manager. At the age of 17, she managed the Fix-It Lab. It's a community lab where the kids fix free of charge computers for the community. At the age of 18, she decided to postpone her army service and do a year of service for her own community in Kiryat Shmona, in Neta. During that year, on the Women's International Day, she initiated an event with the mayor of Kiryat Shmona and invited me as a guest key speaker. A week ago, Rachel was enlisted to the army to an elite technological unit. So Rachel represents hundreds of kids that we spread around Israel that are changing the landscape of the country. I believe they will turn the startup metropolis into a startup nation for all. So I would like to thank you from the bottom of my heart for your investment, for having me here, to wish you all Gmar Khatima Tova and Shana Tova from me and from the Neta Kids.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. תודה. שנה טובה. תודה. Thank you very much. שנה טובה. תודה. שנה טובה. תודה. שנה טובה.